OmniFocus 2.7 for iOS is a significant update that takes advantage of new functionality introduced in iOS 9 and watchOS 2. In this video, I'll take you on a tour of the key new features that have been introduced in this release. We'll also explore this new functionality in more depth in future articles, videos, and webinars on Learn OmniFocus. Let's start by looking at some new functionality that's available on all iOS devices running iOS 9. While I'll be demonstrating these features on the iPad, you can apply everything you've learned to the iPhone and iPod Touch as well. You can now search OmniFocus using Spotlight. When you're on the home screen, just swipe down and start typing. For example, let's say I'm planning a trip to Dublin and want to quickly get to that project. I'll type Dublin and Spotlight instantly reveals the project I'm looking for. In this case, I included some notes along with the project, which are also visible within Spotlight. Now if I tap on this search result, I'll be taken right to the project in OmniFocus. Another new feature in 2.7 is the ability to create multiple actions in OmniFocus simply by copying and pasting text from other apps. For example, let's say that I use notes to take minutes for my team meetings and want to create OmniFocus actions from a list of action items included in the minutes. This can be accomplished simply by copying and pasting this information into an outline view in OmniFocus. Let's start by using the new two-finger selection feature in iOS 9 to select the text. And then I'll tap Copy and switch back over to OmniFocus. And once I'm there, I'll tap on the name of the project and then tap Paste. Notice that three new actions are created, and at this point it's a good idea to go through these new actions and add details such as the context and perhaps a defer or due date. As was the case in previous versions of OmniFocus, you can capture actions to your inbox by using a combination of Siri and Reminders. This functionality still exists in 2.7 but works a little bit differently. I'll start by opening up the Reminders app and I'll tap on Add List to create a new list. I'll simply call this new list Inbox, and we'll give it a purple color. This will serve as a temporary storage area for tasks that are waiting to be imported into OmniFocus. Next, I'll switch over to OmniFocus, and we'll swipe down in the Home area to reveal the Settings button, and then scroll down to the Capture section and tap on Reminders. Reminders Capture is currently turned off, so I'll go ahead and turn it on. I'll select the inbox list that I just created, and then tap on Settings and Done. I can now use Siri to add something to my OmniFocus inbox by invoking Siri and saying something like, Add Call John about the proposal to my inbox list. The task is added to the inbox list in Reminders, and OmniFocus has automatically imported it from this list. If I switch back to Reminders, you'll notice that a new Captured by OmniFocus list has automatically been created. Once an item has been added to OmniFocus, it's marked Complete within Reminders and then added to this new list. I can see everything that's been captured and imported into OmniFocus by tapping on Captured by OmniFocus and then tapping Show Completed. OmniFocus 2.7 for iOS also takes advantage of iOS 9 functionality that is available exclusively on iPads, namely Slide Over and Split View. We'll look at Slide Over first. And let's say you're answering some email and want to reference OmniFocus without leaving the Mail app. Simply swipe from right to left, starting on the right bevel, and voila. If you're not seeing the OmniFocus app, swipe down from the top to scroll through a list of recent apps. Split View takes us a step further and allows OmniFocus to share the screen with another app that supports Split View. For example, let's say you're reviewing some notes in Omni Outliner and want to start creating some OmniFocus actions based on these notes. Swipe from right to left as before, and then drag the dragger bar further to the left so that the screen space is equally shared by Omni Outliner and OmniFocus. Both apps will continue to run simultaneously, and you can interact with either app as you would if the apps were running full screen. OmniFocus 2.7 for iOS also includes a new version of the OmniFocus for Apple Watch app that has been completely rewritten to take advantage of significant new functionality introduced in watchOS 2. The first thing you'll likely notice is that OmniFocus for Apple Watch is much faster. 
It's now a native watch app, so it doesn't need to constantly communicate with your iPhone. There are also a variety of ways to keep key data, such as do and flagged items, in plain sight on your Apple Watch. Before we look at these features on the watch, let's take a moment to configure the OmniFocus settings on the iPhone. I'll swipe down on the home screen and choose Settings. Then scroll down to the Notifications section and choose Today and Watch. Here I can specify what information I want to display in the Today widget on my iPhone and in OmniFocus Glances and Complications on my Apple Watch. If you're using the Pro version, you can even select a custom perspective you've created. I'll select Overdue, Do, and Do Soon. If I go back to the home screen, you'll see that there are three items that are due soon. I'll tap on Today to see the specific items. Now let's look at how this information can be accessed on the Apple Watch. For this example, we'll use the modular watch face. I can now customize this and other watch faces to display OmniFocus related information. In this case, information on items that are due, due soon, or overdue. There are two sizes of complications available. The large complication displays the number of items that meet the criteria I specified earlier, along with the next item on the list. I can conveniently jump to the OmniFocus app just by tapping on the complication. The small complication displays a count indicating how many items still meet this criteria. It doesn't give me any details, but it takes up less space on the screen and tapping on the number will take me right into the OmniFocus app. If you have the OmniFocus Glance enabled, you can also see this information in a glance. The glance shows the count, the next item on the list, and the due date of this item if there is one. To see more, simply tap on the glance to be taken to the OmniFocus app. While in the OmniFocus app, you can create a new action by force touching on the screen and tapping on the new item button. Then simply speak the new action, then tap Done, and the new item will be added to your inbox for processing later. I hope this gives you a good taste of what's possible with OmniFocus 2.7 for iOS. Be sure to visit LearnOmniFocus.com to access our growing library of articles, videos, and webinars. As always, many thanks to the talented folks at the Omni Group for all the time and energy they put into this release. I'm Tim Stringer from Learn OmniFocus. Thanks for watching.